Hello and welcome back to, I guess, the part two of this whole XP analysis thing following that heroic weapon bug I wanted to get out there separately. This video, I'm sure, won't be as cool, and I'm sorry, there is no song at the end, but there has been plenty of interest in gaining a better understanding of XP gain in this game, and I've also seen plenty of confusion. There will always be people that mix up score and XP, stuff like that. Now, to try to give a quick too long didn't watch of the broken heroic weapon variants video, if you want more evidence and examples, you can watch it, but heroic variants appear to only give 10% bonus XP as of right now, not 15% like they claim, and also all variants of any rarity will give no bonus XP if you're using your division skill, like the suppressor, bipod, and so on. That video ended up making more waves than I expected, I even saw an article about it. I did think it was a fairly surprising discovery, but to be clear, the amount of XP you may have lost to those bugs is nothing extreme, because it isn't 15% of all XP, it's only for weapon kills. Let's say you have 2,000 kills with heroic variants so far, where you were using something like the suppressor the entire time, or a sniper sharpshooter holding your breath, I'm sure that 2,000 number is already overestimating for 95% of people, but let's go with it, and let's say you were also playing TDM or something where you get 100 XP per kill, well then 15% of all those kills will be 30,000 XP. If you play a lot of Domination or War, then that would be cut down to 15 or 12,000. That is still a hefty chunk of XP you were robbed of, but you could gain that back in a few games. As we will be exploring further, the XP you get from just the kills is a small portion of your overall XP, so 10% or 15% of that is even smaller. Smaller. Still though, that is not me apologizing for Sledgehammer, it definitely is frustrating and needs to be fixed, even on principle of the fact that this is yet another thing embarrassingly wrong, we were all convinced we were getting something that we were in fact not getting all along, and that's pretty bad. It's a problem when you can't trust any of what the game tells you, we shouldn't have to test every claim they make. Well there's that footnote on the previous video, now moving on to some assorted XP tips, I figured I should lead with that because that's most relevant to what might actually help, and then afterwards I'll go into nauseating detail on the calculation of XP, because that could get very boring for some people. So first of all, are there any simple changes you could make to your gameplay to gain faster or easier XP? I'm sure you've seen all the videos, how to rank up fast, how to gain quick XP, there are always tons of those, but I find most of the information is either obvious or not very actionable advice. For example, one might say, here's a game mode I think you should play, and also do the challenges for more XP, and do the orders to get supply drops because they give the bonus XP. Alright, fair enough, but I assume you're already playing the game game mode you want to play, and with challenges, either you're already doing the challenges and orders for the sake of completing them and the titles and gear, or maybe you're someone who doesn't care about them and just wants to play to win and earn score streaks, in which case it's probably not going to be fun for you to challenge hunt just for the XP. Many of them will be completed naturally anyway. However, there is one type of challenge I want to highlight because I think it is one that falls perfectly in the middle of those two playstyles, where challenge hunters might ignore them and challenge haters wouldn't mind doing them. I'm talking about the insane amount of reticle challenges in this game. If you're on the challenge completionist side like me, you might have been ignoring them because there are just too many. I personally do not care about completing all of these things one bit. There's no big reward at the end of the tunnel, unless maybe you do all of them and you get to change the reticle color, who knows? But that has yet to be seen. They don't even tell you they give any XP reward on the main screen here like all the other challenges do. However, I did some looking into them in the after action report, and it turns out they definitely do. So I screenshotted all the tiers, and you can see them on screen there. So after getting the first 500 kills with an optic attachment, you will have gained a free 10,000 XP. Not bad at all. Then you will unlock four more challenges, things like 25 headshots, 10 long shots, 20 double kills, and 10 five kill streaks. It's funny that these things are harder versions of the camos. You can do those if you want, and they're worth 2,500 each for a total of an additional 10,000 XP, but it's hard to determine how long those ones take, so let's go back to the 500 kills for 10,000 XP. Just to put that in perspective, assuming you go all the way to 500, that's an extra 20 XP per kill. Nothing to scoff at. If you're playing a game mode where you're getting a 100 XP per kill like TDM, using an optical attachment is twice as good as an epic weapon, and even if heroics worked properly it would be better than that too. Ooh, that would be a good clickbait title, how to turn any weapon into a heroic weapon by putting a reflex on. Uh, maybe not. Also, if you're playing War, where you're only getting 40 XP per kill, doing these reticle challenges is like 50% bonus XP on your kills with that plus 20. So really, these are worth paying attention to. I know me saying 20 XP extra per kill is assuming you look down the optic for every kill, but even if you take 5 to 15% off for hipfire kills, that's still some very nice XP. The challenges do run out, of course, once you complete them, unlike weapon variants, but there are a ton of them to do. Many of the rifles have the lens reflex and four times, only the 1940 
and FG42 don't have the lens available, but the SMGs all have lens and reflex, the LMGs all have reflex and four times, snipers have the four times, and shotguns have the reflex. That's a total of 47 optics, or 54, including the winter DLC weapons, each with their own challenges. So 54 times 500 kills, that's 27,000 weapon kills you could get before running out of those challenges, and then you could do the follow-up challenges for the additional 10,000 XP each. To put those kills in perspective, here at Master Prestige, I only have a total of about 30,000 kills, but those kills are including kill streaks and mounted guns and explosives and launchers and melee and melee weapons and pistols, so even now, after getting Chrome 2, I've only made maybe 20% progress on all the optic challenges. You're not running out anytime soon, which is good, because I don't care about completing them, they're just good for XP. And just for fun, 54 optics times 20,000 XP, that's over a million XP tied up in these reticle challenges. That's huge, so I highly recommend with whichever weapon you're using, consider sacrificing one attachment slot for an optic at all times, or at least for me it's a sacrifice, the iron sights are usually fine with me, and I prefer other things, except for maybe having a four times on the M1A1 and Bren for example, but maybe you're a player who already liked using an optic, in which case maybe if you always use the reflex and did the challenges for that ages ago, try out the lens for a while or the four times. If it doesn't negatively affect your gameplay too much, you might decide it is worth the bonus XP. This is especially good to keep in mind as you work towards the camo challenges if you haven't done those yet, just use the optics on everything as you go, because it really isn't going to be worth coming back to the sawed off to complete reflex sight challenges, especially for those things like the 10-5 killstreaks. Yeah, maybe only do those add-on challenges with the good weapons. For things like the bar, for example, having three different optics available, easy 60,000 XP right there. Well, you get the point, and maybe you already knew all of this, but I think that while everyone knows about the regular challenges giving good XP, these are some challenges that I know a lot of people ignore, since they don't tell you about the XP up front, but they are good, and equipping a new reticle at all times is a very simple and actual change you can make to your gameplay to be gaining some extra passive XP. And if you already have Chrome, this might give you a reason to revisit weapons and try out your different variants. Well, that's the biggest thing I wanted to touch on in the tip department. I won't tell you what game mode to play or anything, but we will take a look at them all in a moment. One more little tip, as a weirder thing you could consider, saving up your supply drops to open them during double XP. No, I have never bought any supply drops ever, I just haven't opened them for some reason, so I have like 600 and something because I thought it would be funny and don't really care about them, I don't know. Don't worry, I'll open the winter ones before the event ends. But XP boosters do stack with existing double XP as I will show later on, so that's a very good way to use that. It's basically 25% more efficient than using your boosters without there being active double XP. I guess maybe I should try to show my thinking there. If you activate the double XP early, that's like having 2 XP now and 2 XP later during a double XP weekend for a total of 4 XP, but if you save it up, that's like having 1 XP playing now and then 4 XP during the double XP weekend for a total of 5 XP. So 5 is bigger than 4, you're getting 25% more in the saving up scenario. If you want to open them up right away though, that's fine too. So now, finally, time to dive into some XP theory, taking a look at how it is calculated and some differences in game modes. I should first get everybody on the same page. What is score and what is XP? Score is what you see popping up in game for kills and for playing the objective. Every number you see come up on the screen that goes towards your score streaks in game, and it is what goes on the scoreboard, go figure, as well as the leaderboard, and it is not affected by any XP boosters or weapon variants. That'll get supplied after the game. I'm sure most people know that, but you'd be surprised. There was a comment where somebody thought it was harder to earn streaks with a suppressor on their SMG because of that variant bug I talked about before? No, definitely not. Now I've also heard people say that score has no bearing on XP, and while maybe behind the scenes the game doesn't use score to calculate XP, there is clearly enough overlap so that it looks like score does more or less translate directly into XP. The after action report is actually pretty thorough at giving us an XP breakdown here. Match XP is the interesting one we'll come back to. This was a winter gun game so there was double XP, and that will double your match XP, not the match bonus or challenges, that's normal. The active boosts is for the 25% XP from orders or the double XP from supply drops. I had 25 XP active here from an order, and you can see it's actually 50% of my match XP because it was applied after the double XP. So XP boosters do stack in this game, it wasn't just applied to the base match XP, that's why saving supply drops for double XP is an effective strategy. Then there's the match bonus, that will be 1000 if you lose or 2000 if you win, however in war mode you 
you get 1500 for losing and 3000 for winning, and that's for each round. So after playing both attacking and defending rounds of war, your match bonus will be either 3000, 4500, or 6000, depending on what you won. Finally, challenge bonus will show total earnings from challenges. So the only interesting number here is your match XP, and from what I learned with some trial and error, I have a pretty good way of estimating this number. It all started with some single kill testing just to lay a baseline to confirm that score is related to XP. You get 100 XP for a TDM kill, for example, and 50 XP for a domination kill, just like the score. And then I tried a bunch more things I won't go into. It turns out if you take your score from the match, then go to the medals, and you add up all the XP from only the medals that did not also give you score in game, that turns out to be a very good estimate. I know some people still think that medals don't give you XP at all, which is not true. I think that's because there was a big thing about low XP rates with that triple XP debacle when the game launched. But yeah, medals do give XP. You can see many of the values of them in here. These are all medals that did not also give score in game. So adding all of those onto my score in this gun game, that gives 2870, which is interestingly 300 XP short of my actual match XP kinda weird, but as I did more testing, that happened more. Here's another gun game, 2040 score, I added up all these medals, that equaled 3015, I was once again 300 XP short from the true value. And a third gun game, exactly the same thing, added it up but fell 300 short. Okay, so I feel like I'm onto something here with this method, even though I can't tell you where the magic 300 XP comes from, at least it's always 300. How about domination? Much more complicated, so we have more medals to look at. 24, 30 score, plus 350, 50, 25, 200. Now careful, I will not add on the playmaker medal, because even though it says 450 XP, that is a medal also associated with score. These medals are 150 XP each, but they're also 150 score each when you capture a dom flag in game. It's the same way for the the division skill medals as covered in the other video, those medals say they give XP, but the score also pops up in game when you get the kill, so those don't get added on, they replace, they overwrite. Double kills though, for example, don't give any score, so I'll add on that 500 XP. Continuing on, 750, 750, 500, 25, skip vanguard, that gives score. 600, skip defender, 25, and then none of the kill streak medals give extra XP. Kills with streaks are 25 score in game, and that's all they count for. You don't get anything extra for earning the streaks. The result of all that is, go figure, 6205, which is 300 short of 6505, my actual match XP. I did this for many more games, which I will only show quickly on screen in case you wanted to bother to check some of the math, but in every DOM game, the same thing happened. I got very close with all the adding, then needed to add 300 XP from somewhere. How about a game of Hardpoint 2, a favorite of mine for XP? I added everything up here, then I had to add 370 because I got 37 kills with an epic MB40, then plus a magic 300 yet again to equal my actual XP there. I do love Hardpoint though, you'll notice that the multi-kill medals being double, triple, and so on, and killstreak medals give very nice bonuses compared to everything else, which is where score streaks can really come into play. Some people might think, oh, you only get 25 XP per kill with score streaks, so then they aren't really worth it. I'll just run a recon plane that will help me get kills on the ground, that's a good strategy and there's nothing wrong with it, but there is something to be said for the XP you can earn from the easy multi-kill and killstreak medals that come from the carpet bombers and the ball turrets, and anyone can earn them easily in hardpoint with the good old requisitions. Pro tip for a fun newbie score streak setup, you can run requisitions to earn something like emergency airdrop, carpet bombing, ball turret, I used a permanent unlock on the emergency airdrop, so you can go earn all three, then swap to an ordinance class to be able to re-roll your care packages from the airdrop you call in, then when you finally have everything you can swap back to a normal class with a normal basic training for the rest of the game since you can't earn any more streaks. It's a pretty fun way to play hardpoint and the easy streaks and multi kills result in some very nice XP. Back to all our calculations though, that magic 300 bonus started changing around in different game modes, shaking my confidence in this method. In TDM it seemed to be a plus 100 after everything was totaled up, or in one game that I joined in progress it was a plus zero, everything just added up perfectly without any magic bonus. I'm definitely missing something, my way of calculating magic XP here is probably entirely wrong, but that's why I called it a very good estimate of match XP. It's always right there in the right ballpark, and honestly, that's all we need. It's not like you will ever have a reason to calculate your own XP, the game adds it up for you. This whole venture was just one of curiosity. There are two very different game modes I should mention though. In Search and Destroy, the metal XP values get adjusted quite a bit. Many of them get a lot lower, such as the first blood metal getting cut down to 25 XP from 100, because you can earn one every round. 
time, so it shouldn't be worth as much. And many medals get cut in half, and things like kill streaks are not worth nearly as much, often getting cut down to a fifth. Bloodthirsty going from 250 to 50. However, there is a reason for that. I thought the elimination medal would be worth 500 XP or something, but it turns out that medal is worth nothing. It seems like what might actually be going on here is you take your score and you add up the medals like normal, then multiply the whole thing by 5 to get your total XP. So that's why medals are so much lower, because they end up getting multiplied by 5. So killstreaks go back to where they should be, and other things end up being worth a little more than they were in regular modes, with kills being worth a base 500 XP as we're used to in S&D. Finally, War, the most different game mode. War has yet another set of adjusted metal values. This time, nearly all the metals related to killing, like headshots and multi-kills and killstreaks especially, are nerfed into the ground. Some of them are similar to the S&D values, except there is no multiplier at the end. Kills that aren't on the objective are just not encouraged in War, which is cool. All those snipers in the back trying not to die that you get mad at, just know they aren't earning much XP. Not only is your KD not counted to discourage going on kills streaks in war, it will also not help you rank up very much either. By far the bulk of your XP in war comes from all that objective play. Escorting the tanks and completing objectives, huge bonuses for that, there's building barricades, taking and delivering the fuel, getting kills around the tanks for those defender and attacker bonuses, or getting kills inside the bunkers on Neptune for those easy defender bonuses. Big XP doing that because every kill is as a defender. And of course the war match bonus is nice too, that 3000 for every round win. I've heard people say, why is there no incentive to stop the enemies at the first objective as defenders, we should just keep the game going longer and win at the end. Yeah, it would be nice to have a bigger incentive to win early, but there kind of is one already. Let's say you manage to defend the breakout command post right at the beginning, which would only take 4 minutes. So getting a 3000 XP match bonus for that quick win is pretty good. Anyway, when it comes to calculating war XP, I found it to be very straightforward. The score plus medals method seems to work perfectly with no magic number needed. Some examples of that I'm showing on screen. You may notice that war is the only game mode where you might see a weird XP number that isn't divisible by 5 like 12,998 XP. Well, that is because with kills being worth 40 XP, not 50, if you use any XP boosting variants, you'll end up getting 10% of 40, and adding those 4s onto your XP can mess things up. In this game, after adding up all the score and medals, I got to 12,990 and had to add 8, because I got 2 kills with a weapon variant I picked up off the ground. Same with this game, everything added up perfectly, except I had to add 148 because I got 37 kills with a variant. So I think I can stop with this XP calculating madness. I'm sure reading off numbers does not make for great video. You must have been very curious about XP earning to have made it this far. Again, I don't think the way I'm calculating XP here is how the game does it. There are those weird magic numbers that I can't explain sometimes, but it has been very good at estimating. Feel free to give it a try adding it up yourself, and let me know if you have a eureka moment and you can build a grand unified XP theory that's more accurate than mine. As I was saying though, there's no real reason to know this stuff. This isn't leading up to anything, I don't have the best XP tip ever, it's just if you wanted to know more about medals and XP in different game modes. Maybe one conclusion we can draw is that the absolute fastest way to rank up would be to be really really good and go on big 30 kill streaks. because once you get past 30 every single kill will be a thousand XP each, earning the unstoppable medals. But that isn't very helpful advice, because not many people casually go on 30 kill streaks. and if you could do that then I assume you already are. If I were to recommend a game mode, War and Hardpoint are hands down my two favorites. War is great if you want to kick back and play the objective. Very good XP if you've got the pro strats, especially with that nice match bonus for winning. If you're not playing the objective though, it's not worth your time. If you want to go for kills and earn easy score streaks in a 100 score per kill mode, then Hardpoint is fantastic for that. You could do the requisitions thing I mentioned for an easy fun time of it, or maybe you're too pro for that garbage. Finally, I guess free for all and hardcore free for all could be good too if you're MLG pro winning every gunfight and just want constant action, definitely more than TDM. I've heard the argument for kill confirmed, but that doesn't convince me. If you confirm every tag and get some denied tags, yeah, that's more XP than TDM, but they're both bad XP game modes, I think. Hardpoint can have you rolling in those valuable multi-kill medals, and War has tons of rewarding objective play, but of course you'll just play what you find fun, and that's perfectly fine. Well, okay, this has gone long enough. To summarize everything, consider doing those optic challenges if you've been ignoring them, maybe save your supply drops for a quad XP weekend, and hopefully you learned something interesting but pointless about XP calculation. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time.